Welcome to FT Markets, IMF warnings, slowing US jobs growth and continuing worries about China hang over the markets. We have John Wraith, Head of UK Rate Strategy at UBS, in the studio to discuss the deteriorating sentiment over the past two months. Welcome John. Morning. Our first chart shows falling US bond yields and falling US inflation expectations in five years time. As you can see, the outlook is pretty subdued on the inflation front. John, what does this mean for global growth, inflation and US interest rates? Well, this is an interesting chart. It really does show you how concerned the markets have become about the outlook for inflation. Um, the Federal Reserve doesn't have a specific target in the same way the Bank of England, say, does. But around 2% for CPI is where central banks try to keep inflation typically. Um, you can see before this latest fall in the five-year five -year forward inflation expectations, we were running at around that sort of rate. That tells you the market thinks inflation is going in the medium term back towards target, and that suggests growth will be steady as well. But since August, um, we've seen that fall away. It's now around one and three quarters. That's too low. Um, it does highlight worries that inflation is going to stay suppressed for a long period of time. And the trigger for this latest move really was China and worries that the slowing in China, which is happening, is perhaps going to be more pronounced than anticipated and, uh, and, and that that in turn will mean a drop in demand for global commodities and oil, which turn feeds through to inflation. So this is a real worry the market has at the moment. And, and inflation clearly is a key figure for US rates. Yeah. Um, and that will obviously possibly delay yeah the uh, next ra rise in rates. When do you think the next rate rise will be in the US? Well, we think it's probably still coming this year. You can see the Fed wants to get on with it. Um, and in fact, if you went back to early summer, they were giving all the signals that they were going to move in September. Now, various things happened between the beginning of the summer and, and, and September and their September meeting. But one of them clearly was this fall in inflation expectations. And any rate hike in that environment would clearly set alarm bells ringing that they are choking off demand and exacerbating the risk of excessively low inflation by acting. So they didn't go in September. They're hoping, as we all are, that the slowdown in China um, proves fairly short-lived and is an adjustment rather than a material drop in demand. And if we see a, a bit more optimism expressed in higher inflation expectations by the end of the year, we think that they will go in December. But the fact they've had to wait yet again is feeding this sort of concern the market has that we're in a sort of semi-permanent slump around the world. Um, our second chart, I think, might help explain what could happen going forward. Um, as you can see, the oil price and US inflation started falling around September last year. What, what does that mean for the October US inflation numbers, mm. given that the high oil price will fall out of the annual calculation? Yeah, and therefore, to, yeah. US inflation may pick up mm. and, and may increase expectations on a, a rate yeah. rise. What are your thoughts? Well, I think, you know, that it's, it's expectations are what matter. Inflation today is where it is for a number of reasons, and it can't be influenced in the very short term. Um, so that previous chart that showed medium term expectations falling away is troubling. What essentially, but that is fed by the fact that headline inflation in a range of developed markets is, as we can see here, very low or even negative in some European countries. Um, so from a sort of um, perspective point of view, it will make a big difference if headline inflation starts to rise. The reason it's likely to do that, and that most central banks are, off, are strongly forecasting it will, is really shown here. If you go back to the beginning of this chart, September last year, the oil price was up around $90 a barrel. It then collapsed through the fourth quarter of last year. It almost halved to sort of $40, $45 a barrel. And with some fluctuation, it's been in that sort of range ever since. So when you consider these inflation numbers that we're seeing now relating to August, July, June, you're comparing an oil price down here with one that a year ago was much higher. So it's, it's compressing headline inflation, as you can see. As we get into October towards year end and beyond, you're going to be comparing this oil price, assuming it stays around here, with a very similar one from a year before. So what that means from a base effect, we are looking at an annual percentage change in inflation, is it should start to turn higher. That's called the base effect. And it means that central banks will be communicating in an environment where headline inflation is finally getting away from zero and heading back, we would expect, towards their targets, at least in the short term. Thank you, John. In conclusion, 
The base effect, as John says, may see inflation picking up over the next few months. In such a scenario, US rate rises are back on the agenda this year and sentiment could improve.